Minsk, Belarus. What's in a name? October Revolution Square, Karl Marx Boulevard, Lenin Street. There's no missing the Soviet-era influence. And Belarus is still snugly geared to its powerful neighbor Russia, politically and militarily. Its economy depends on this. It relies on Russia for its energy. Dissident artist Ales Marashkin feels it's high time his country cut the umbilical cord. He shows us his rendering of a photo taken during elections in the 1950s. We voted 100% for Stalin. Nothing has changed. Then it was Stalin. Today it's Lukashenko who gets the 100% in elections. It's only out the window we can see our people free, brandishing the flag of independent Belarus. But I believe that now things are going to change for us too, like in Poland, Lithuania and Ukraine. We can't escape the changes. It has only been a few months, but President Alexander Lukashenko has been displaying signs of opening up. The country others have called Europe's last dictatorship is the only one on the map that isn't a member of the Council of Europe. What would happen to its closeness to the Kremlin if Belarus cooperated democratically with the EU? We have and we must and we want to, to be close partners and friends with both. And we don't believe in a choice between Russia and the European Union. We firmly are convinced that this is a false choice. We do not have to choose and we will not choose between Russia and the European Union. We will not work with Russia at the expense of the European Union and we will not work with the European Union at the expense of Russia. Last October, the EU temporarily suspended sanctions against Lukashenko's apparatus. This gave him reign to travel freely. It came in response to the freeing of his last political prisoner. The head of the European Parliament's Belarus delegation does not regret the decision. The decision was risky, but served a purpose since three months later we're seeing positive changes in Belarus. It's not only talk, like for instance priming a dialogue with the OSCE on reforming the electoral law to prevent future fraud when the ballots are counted. These are also concrete decisions. Two independent newspapers are now allowed to circulate throughout the country. Freedom of association has been granted. Opposition leader Alexander Milinkevich has been able to set up his political party legally. Early this year, the government created three consultative bodies open to the opposition. Jana Litvina, Sakharov Prize laureate and head of an independent journalist association, decided to participate in one of them. It's not a betrayal to enter a dialogue with the powers that be. My position and the association's position have not changed. It's just another way to make ourselves heard and defend a professional point of view. The changes are to be taken with a grain of salt. Three years ago, when the last presidential elections took place, 15 newspapers were banned and all but two of them are still restricted. The free press is still poor next to the state press, which draws on 80 million euros in subsidies per year. 70 opposition candidates were allowed to run in last September's legislative elections, but none of them won a seat. International observers saw fraud in this. A Belarus parliament official offers a different explanation. In fact, the opposition had already been represented in this assembly. But this time they weren't elected. What can I say? The people didn't want them. What can you do? But I'm convinced that our current developments will permit us to perfect the structures of civil society in our country and that the situation is going to change. The Assembly doesn't have real powers. Its members don't sit according to party affiliation but as representatives of their regions. Lukashenko's puppets, the opposition calls them. It has been repressed for too long to give much credence to the baby steps taken so far. The leader of the United Civic Party is skeptical of the changes. Seen from the outside, 
It seems there's something new, but in fact the regime within stays the same. We still have the same tribunals with the same judges in fealty to the political power, still the same parliament members, in reality 100% appointed and not elected, still the same military service forced on young opponents. Our opposition is no longer imprisoned, but it is grounded. Its leaders are still not let out of the country for political reasons. That's the real Belarus. Could Lukashenko be manipulating the European Union? Political isolation produces no results. We have understood that if we didn't reach out to this dictator, Belarus risked losing its independence, and the EU would therefore lose a neighbour, which is today an independent country. We want to avoid that at all costs in the geopolitical context. How believable is Lukashenko's conversion from autocrat to democrat? His attraction towards the West is driven by necessity. It's the Belarusian economy. The experts say it's in such a bad way that foreign loans and investment are its only hope. Russia wouldn't refuse, but Minsk knows that would attach more strings, even bring possible absorption. This analyst describes the ruler's conversion as self-preservation. Lukashenko understood that Russia in both situations is not a, a hell but a, a very direct threat not only to Belarus in general but to, to him personally. So he decided to engage uh, with Europe just to get by, to save himself uh, financially and politically. Lukashenko went west shopping for a loan in December and landed two and a half billion dollars from the International Monetary Fund. Europe is also willing to offer Belarus a place in its Eastern Partnership policy. Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine are already looking forward to more financial support. The EU's goal is a stable buffer along the Russian border. This partnership is preparing for launch at a summit in Prague this May. We are interested in becoming a partner, a member of this partnership. But it is extremely important that this is an inclusive partnership, taking aboard all the six countries of the region without any preconditions. Minsk doesn't want the partnership to stray from the economic to the political. Only a third of Belarusians today say they're interested in closer EU ties, but the idea is catching on. The Eastern partnership would be an alternative to actual membership in the bloc.